Hi everyone, today we're doing an overview of a product. This is the Nokco uh, Dot Dash Notepad. Nock Paper in the past has copped a bit of flack for its, uh, well, not being particularly fountain pen friendly. Uh, and I think they must have done something to change this because there's a lot about this paper that I really like. And there's a lot about the product that I really, really like as well. So just a, a brief sort of overview to start with. These are uh, spiral uh, bound or uh, O-ring coil bound notepads. They come in a pack of two uh, from retailers all over. Uh, these ones were from Scriber here in Australia. They have a nice sort of uh, cardstock, sort of waxy cardstock uh, red cover and a white thicker uh, cardstock uh, back cover. Um, just type that one in there. The paper is what they call their dot dash system, which, as you can see, refers to the fact that although it looks like it's grid, when you actually take a closer look, it's a series of dot, uh, dots and dashes uh, to make that, that grid sort of format. It's a nice light blue, it's not intrusive, uh, and it gives you a good guideline for what you're working on. But let's talk about the paper. So, when we talk about fountain pen friendly paper, the main criteria that we talk about are how absorbent the paper is, how much bleeding, feathering and ghosting there is of uh, the writing, uh, how if there's spread, all those sorts of uh, things. And this paper, or Knock Co, suggests that this is fountain pen friendly paper. So I thought first thing I would do is give it a bit of a test of that. And I ran it through uh, a number of uh, different pens and inks. Aurora Blue Black in a Lamy medium. It's a particularly broad medium, mind you. Um, Pilot Namiki Black in a, a medium Pilot Metropolitan. Diamine Pumpkin in a Diplomat Aero medium. Lamy Petrol in a 1.1mm Lamy stub. Robert Oster Deep Sea in a, a Pilot Metropolitan Fine. Hiroshi Zuku uh, Con Pecky in a Platinum Soft Fine to give just that tiny little bit of flex a bit of a, a push, uh, and then Noodles 54th uh, Massachusetts, I have it, however that said, uh, in a Goulet 1.5mm uh, put on a serendipity uh, pen. So, as you can see, I tried a number of different brands, a number of different nib options, uh, just so we could see how the paper reacted. Uh, and if we look at the back of that page, what we find is that most things perform well enough. Um, I've labelled them just so I could work out know what they were. The Lamy Medium with the Aurora Blue Black bled through occasionally. The Platinum Soft Fine bled where we got the flex, but that's sort of to be expected. A lot of flex pens will bleed through a lot of paper, even Rhodia will bleed through. And of course the Goulet 1.5 with the 54th uh, ink pops through uh, quite a lot as well. And of course, a, a bit of ghosting um, to come through the page there as well. But there is little to no feathering, uh, which is really nice to see. And really, I think the paper performs on the front side really, really well. Now, whether you'd use it on the back side, uh, that's up to you. Um, I think in some of these sort of less uh, wet pens, uh, you could certainly use both sides without too much worry. But also depends what you're using this paper, this uh, particular product for. Are you going to use this for both sides of the paper? Probably not. I, I would suggest this would be used for, in the, the style of uh, paper it is, for taking notes or writing lists, things like that. Uh, and while we all want to use uh, paper as efficiently as possible using both sides, there are occasions where this sort of paper might not. In fact, the sh the fact that it's perforated to me suggests that it's designed for more temporary uh, use anyway. Now, I ran it through a couple of other tests on the other side just to sort of see how they went. Um, and I used a Lamy ballpoint pen, a Pentel Tradio Rollerball, a Sharpie Fine Liner, a Sharpie Ultra Fine Permanent Marker, uh, a Blackwing 602 uh, pencil, and did a rub out test in the middle of the, the line. And we got most of it gone uh, with a couple of rubs and then uh, you know, sort of uh, 
on a single swipe, it did a fairly reasonable job. The Stubbolo Boss Highlighter over a ballpoint pen uh, performed really well. The paper is absorbent enough to take most of uh, the ink. Then I used a, a brush pen. I think I used that with uh, Sailor ink, Sailor Black ink in it. Uh, and yeah, it's performed well on the surface. What I am going to do is I'm going to do a quick little uh, water resistance test just on this paper, just to see how uh, it copes. And this is with Pilot Namiki Black ink. So, as you can see, Pilot Namiki Black isn't a permanent ink, yet the paper is so absorbent that most of it has been uh, taken into the paper and has uh, stayed uh, on the paper, and most of the detail is, of course, still completely legible. The big first writing test I did was I wrote out just a couple of lines of Shakespeare, um, and with the 54th Massachusetts ink uh, with the 1.5 millimeter nib and once again as to be expected there is some uh, bleed through uh, but once again not to you know we're putting it through quite a quite a workout with that ink in that nib uh, it's very wet it's very lays down a lot of ink so it's to be expected to a degree now here are the details so it's not code dot dash spiral notepad. It comes in a two pack. In Australia, these retail for around $30. Uh, and in the US online, I've seen them for around the $18 mark. Uh, there are 84 pages. Uh, so I'm assuming that means 42 sheets. Uh, and the size is A5, which is 5.8 by 8.3 inches or 14.8 centimeters by 21 centimeters. It's a 4.25 uh, millimeter dot dash in a sort of a, a light blue print and the paper is 90 uh, GSM paper and I said with cardstock covers. The pages are perforated, it's spiral bound and it's uh, said to be fountain pen uh, friendly. Just a little quote from the Knock uh, Co advertising. Uh, it says here, as awesome as pocket notebooks are, sometimes you need more room for your mind to wander. And that's true. And I think I like the size of this. I we, I have a lot of sort of pocket notepads that I use, Clairefontaine and Rhodia and things like that, as well as field notes, notebooks and the like. And uh, this actually is nice to have something with a bit more uh, size that you're not sort of bound into like a hard bound notebook for bullet journaling or something like that. So I really do uh, quite like um, this. Now I did, the next tests I ran it through uh, is my Does It Sheen page. And what I've done is I selected three inks that I consider to be quite uh, impressive sheening inks. Uh, Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue, Blackstone Barrier Reef Blue, and Lamy Dark Lilac. And we got no sheen. This is not paper for sheening and shading. Um, I've laid down a lot of ink on these and got no result. As you can see from the bleed on the, on the reverse page, uh, it's really, really... Um, I think the paper is just so absorbent that it's just not going to make let any ink really sheen. So, just to sort of a conclusion to wrap up and you know my my thoughts, um, the paper is very smooth. It's it's not waxy like Rhodia, but it's smooth enough that uh, the pen does glide across. There's a slight, a little bit of sort of the ever so slightest amount of tooth, just to know, just so you know, uh, you're writing. Uh, which is quite nice. Ghosting, um, in, particularly in darker inks, is quite apparent. Uh, feathering, virtually none. Uh, bleed, yes, there was some bleed uh, from the bigger wetter pens and, of course, the Sharpie marker. Binding, it's this these O-ring uh, binding. It's strong, it's sturdy, it's nice sort of silver design. Actually, I really like the design and look of this notebook. My only thing is that the spirals are quite small. And so when you do a when you open it up, um, if you're flipping pages, like they occasionally sort of grip uh, in the in the binding. I can't get it to do it now, um, of course. But it's just one size uh, bigger on the O-ring would have been really nice. Although it would remove some of the streamline nature sort of of the of the product. I really like the dot dash. 
I think it's a really nice uh, way of presenting a grid form and a dot in, this, in a single uh, sort of item. It gives you the guidance you need uh, without being obtrusive and sort of standing out sort of too much after you've written on it. Uh, as I said, the paper's uh, perforated, uh, and it's a, it's a good perforation, and the pages do tear out well. That's why this little one's been ducking around in the back there. Um, it sort of tore out nicely and cleanly uh, without leaving you with sort of bits of um, paper strewn across your the top of your, your uh, spiral binding. So, really, value for money, it's decent quality paper. It's, I, I think, uh, for the... For the quality of the paper and for the quality of the presentation, you are getting what you pay for. Normally, a, sp a spiral bound notepad like this, say from a, a brand like Spirex or something, is of course going to be cheaper, but the paper is much less fountain pen friendly. Uh, this is a boutique uh, company for paper, um, and paying $15 Australian for one of these notepads, um, I think. If you've got a use for it, absolutely worth it. Um, so look into it if it's something that you can you can uh, use. So in short, I think it's a really nice notepad, um, particularly for temporary uh, items and for lists and all those sort of note taking. Um, I think there are better papers available, but I think most are in sort of more expensive formats as well. So this is a nice sort of middle ground uh, for what uh, we do. So that was the Nokko uh, A5 dot dash spiral notepad. Um, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you'd like to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, and please feel free to drop me a message with any products you'd like me to look at or any questions you have. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.